So we're going to have a quick look at the IKEA Vindestriker. I'm not sure if that's how you say it, as my Swedish still needs work. It's a relatively inexpensive air quality monitor, which you can pick up for around $49 or £35. It was released in April 2023, and I'll give you my thoughts on it and how you compare it with your very own smart home using Home Assistant. IKEA's website mentions that WHO, the World Health Organization, has found that 9 out of 10 people globally breathe polluted air, and that indoor air can be just as polluted as outdoor air, yet many underestimate the risk of air pollution in their homes. So ideally, IKEA would like you to pair it with their ecosystem, with their range of air purifiers. But since it uses the Open Zigbee Wireless standard, we can make use of this within Home Assistant and build more advanced automations, such as performing any action when a certain air quality temperature or humidity level is met, which I'll be showing later. Also, make sure to check the stock for your closest store on the IKEA website before heading out to buy one, as you might only end up with the Swedish meatballs. As I've noticed in the UK, that some stores have limited stocks or have sold out completely. So it features a particulate matter or PM2.5 sensor which measures everything in the air that is not a gas but are floating objects less than 2.5 micrometers in diameter that can't be seen with the naked eye. This consists of a huge variety of chemical compounds and other materials, some of which could be harmful pollutants or toxic, but others may be benign. Due to the small size of many of these particulates, they could enter the bloodstream and be transported around the body, lodging in the heart, brain, and other organs. Therefore, exposure to particulate matter containing toxins can result in serious impacts to health, especially in vulnerable groups of people, such as the young, elderly, and those with respiratory problems. There's also a TVOC sensor, which is an index used to measure the total volatile organic compounds in parts per billion. VOC is a group of compounds that are emitted as gases from smoking, aerosols such as air fresheners or deodorant sprays, cleaning products and everyday cooking, and other products such as building materials. Many VOCs are harmful to human health, especially over the long term. So in areas of high PM2 and VOC, levels it's advisable to open windows where the outside air is less polluted or use indoor air purifiers in areas such as cities where the outside air may actually be more polluted. There's also a built-in temperature and humidity sensor as well as a traffic light icon for good green, average amber and bad red air quality. All of these sensors can be paired with IKEA's smart home hub or Home Assistant using the Zigbee radio, which sends the, out their current value. To power the device, there's an included USB-C cable, but the plug socket is not included. The USB-C connector, as far as I can tell, is only used for power and is not used for transferring data. So that leads us nicely onto the unboxing and the demo. The box itself is a relatively plain IKEA box. Inside, we have the device itself. It's actually a deeper than it is wide. Uh, and on the back, we find that we have the USB-C input for the power only, the fan uh, for blowing the air over the sensor, and the temperature and humidity sensor at the top. We also get a USB-C cable, which includes the larger USB-C type A to USB-C, as well as a little Velcro strap. Powering on the device using the included USB-C cable, the screen will power up and will immediately start showing the current PM2.5 level, the traffic light, the temperature, uh, humidity, the, and the TOC, whether that is going up or down. So for example, if I spray a, an aerosol nearby, but not into the back, which could damage the sensor, you should immediately see that the PM2.5 levels immediately start rising uh, to an amber level and then drop back down. 
In IKEA's previous version of this device, it was just a traffic light display without the ability to connect it to your smart home. And you would have to take it apart and install a custom ESP home board to make it smart. Thankfully, this time around with the included Zigbee radio, we can pair it with ease. Uh, we can quickly press the pairing button uh, four times to put it into pairing mode. and permit all devices to join our Zigbee network. Once it's been discovered, you'll get a green notification and the device itself will appear in the dashboard. And you can see that it exposes the temperature, humidity and PM, PM 2.5 levels, as well as the VOC index. If you're using the Zigbee to MQTT plugin, everything should just work and the device sensors will now be available to Home Assistant. However, if you're using the built-in ZHA integration, the TVOC sensor will be missing. Now, there is a GitHub pull request that adds the TVOC sensor, but at the time of recording, it wasn't approved or merged in. But since Home Assistant is open source, we can apply the patch directly to the Home Assistant install. To apply the pull request patch to our Home Assistant, we can simply run the script, which I've linked down in the description below. Running the command, then we'll patch Home Assistant and restart automatically. Note that the script does need to be run each time you update Home Assistant or remove and restart its Docker container. And as with most things in life, there are a few minor cons there's no time or date on the display. It would be nice if this could come in a future update, but looking at the LCD, it is limited to only showing three numbers per row. So if I turn the backlight on and hold it up, you should be able to see that, yeah, there's only, there's only three rows available to display the data on, on the screen itself. Pressing and holding the backlight button puts us into the settings mode where we can change how the light behaves, whether we want it to auto off or uh, stay on. You can adjust the, uh, the brightness and the level. Pressing and holding again should take us to the next one, whether we want it to be displayed in Fahrenheit or Celsius. I'll leave it on Celsius. And those are the only options that we can change here. The fan does make a small amount of noise and sometimes, but not often increases for a few seconds to read the air quality. The temperature and humidity lacks decimal places for precision, which makes the data look a bit blocky. Here, for example, I already have an existing temperature sensor which goes down to two decimal places while the IKEA sensor has no decimal places. If we click into one of these you can see that the data which includes the decimal places is more precise than the IKEA product which looks a bit more a blocky over time compared to the data from the other sensor. An additional advantage to using Zigbee to MQQT is that there's also the ability to perform over-the-air upgrades to your device. You can click on check all, OK, and if there are any updates they should appear in the list below. Here you can see that there's a device which needs an update and clicking here will allow me to upgrade it. Note that it does take around about half an hour to send the update to the device due to the limitations of the Zigbee standard. While you can use the ZHA integration to do this, there is no UI that allows you to perform the over-the-air upgrade. Getting the TVOC into Home Assistant requires a bit more setup. If it's available in any color you like, as long as it's white, and although I mentioned that it is USB-C powered, there is no space for a battery. So to power it away from the electrical socket, you would need to add an extra USB-C battery pack. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.